But of course, the party that wants to pack the court now because they're realizing it's a difficult issue, they're stepping back. And instead of saying, no, we're not gonna do that, they're redefining what packing the court is. This is the new technique, and they think our country is stupid enough to buy it. And maybe, maybe, maybe we are, maybe we are. So instead of saying a straight answer, here's what we do, we, we want, we're really gonna pack the court. No, no, you've been packing the court every time, in other words, you do what the Constitution says to do, which is when there's a vacancy, you fill it with a judge of your choice and the Senate's approval. You're packing the court. In other words, you're getting the judges that you want. You're packing them and that we don't want. In other words, you're fulfilling the Constitution. That's packing the court. They're redefining the term. And they think the public is stupid enough to buy that. We saw already the redefinition of terms this week. I don't know if you've been paying attention to the Senate hearings regarding this Judge Barrett, but she happened to have used the term sexual preference. And again, I don't want to get into uh, uh, the issues of the uh, LGBT community or, or, or that issue at all, simply using this uh, as an example of changing the meaning of words in a dynamic fashion. She used the term sexual preference, which has been in our vocabulary and used by everyone for as long as I can remember. The terms, there's nothing pejorative about it, whatever. Uh, Maisie Hirono gets up uh, on her high stand and chastises Justice Barrett, or prospective Justice Barrett, uh, for uh, being, uh, um, uh, using offensive terminology. Because sexual preference apparently is offensive to the LGBT community. Meanwhile, we have lots and lots of video of everyone from uh, Democrats to Republicans to the LBG, LGBT community to everyone else in Hollywood and, and media whatever, using this term sexual preference without meaning any offense whatsoever. But all of a sudden it's offensive. And the very same day, the very same day, dictionary.com and webster's.com added a definition to the word preference. Offensive, possibly offensive, when referred to uh, sexual preference. A meaning that never existed in the dictionary because someone has an agenda all of a sudden, and you can say, oh, well, that's not the dictionary definition. Well, wait until dinner and it will be the dictionary definition. If you're not paying attention, you're missing out. And if you're not paying attention to uh, what's going on right now to the media who are gaslighting you, a great example is this. You can see the media is lying to you. It is outright lying to you. They used to hide their bias. They no longer hide, hide it. They wear it proudly. Two town halls. Vice President Biden, George Stephanopoulos, who, by the way, in my opinion, should never have been a newsman because he's obviously a Clintonista, a Democratic hack. He was the communications director of the, of the Clinton administration. Of course, right? But he treats Vice President Biden in this simultaneous town hall to a massage, a hot, hot, little, little hot compress, uh, uh, a foot rub, uh, uh, very easy questions the most ridiculously easy question, no, not a challenging question in the bunch. And on the other channel, Savannah Guthrie is interrogating President Trump. She thinks that she's a candidate for office and her job is to debate President Trump. The, the, that debate was canceled, so okay. We're going to have another debate and this time it'll be the media versus President Trump. Who does she think she is? I think she thinks she's Chris Matthews, but he was a special case. But um, it's very clear. And this week, social media overstepped. In a, in a, I don't think in a way that they can possibly sidestep. The New York Post exposed a, a, a tale of corruption regarding the vice president and his son and their relationship with... Uh, Funny money, okay? New York Post came out with it, and it was censored by Twitter and Facebook. You could not post this article. 
in the New York Post. From the New York Post. You could not link that article. And if you linked, if you tried to link that article, you could have your Twitter account suspended. It's outright censorship. It's outright, I mean, I don't care who's, what party it was. If it was an expose of President Trump, I would say absolutely, okay? If you censor this news from coming out to the American people, you're interfering with an election in a, a far more robust way than any Russian anywhere was ever accused of. Social media is trying to take away your ability to understand the issues. They are trying to keep you from knowing truth. The media is trying to keep you from knowing the truth. They will keep repeating the same lies over and over again. And they have done so now for so long that people of good faith and good intent can't help but believe it. You hear something repeated over and over again, it's simply human nature to repeat it and believe it. 